Hi, welcome back to the next episode of Introduction to Python. Uh, my name is Spad, and let's get started. All right, so Boolean expressions. Um, a Boolean expression is basically something that is either true or false. Um, it, it's used in comparisons, um, like something is equal to something, something doesn't equal to something, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. Okay, so coming to here, so Five equals five. Um, this is going to give us uh, a true result. Um, I mean, this is this is fairly obvious, um, but this becomes um, useful when we start using variables. So if we've got um, x equals three plus four, y equals seven. If we don't actually know what these are, we can then find out whether or not x equals y within our program, and we can start making decisions based on this. Um, so as we can see, they're, they're both true down here. Um, then we can um, also look for um, inequalities. Um, so if x equals 8, then if we try and see if um, x equals y, of course, this is going to come out as false. Um, however, if we then change our inequality to x is greater than or equal to y, this will come out again as true. So this is all uh, fairly basic um, mathematics. Um, we all learned this way back in the day, uh, going through um, primary school or grammar school. Um, the other thing that we can do is we can start setting conditions as true. And we can set things as false. Um, true and false are reserved words within Python. Um, and they, they, they refer to um, sort of the, the logical um, idea of whether or not something is true or something is false. So if we set x equals, to, um, x equals y greater than x, that should work. And of course, y is not greater than x, so our, our final line here is false. This is um, less useful until we come up with our logical operators. So our logical operators are and, which means that both um, the left operator and the right op or the left operand and the right operand must both be true for it to be true, um, or the left operator or the left right operator or both have to be true for um, or to be true, and then not negates the position. So um, so if we have x and y. Because um, x is true and y is false, um, the AND operator is going to come up as false, as we can see down here. Or we'll give us a different answer. If we do x or y, That's incorrect. Why is this? Oh, sorry, I forgot that one. Right, so x or y is true. Um, that is correct. Um, and if we try print x because it's true and not y because y is false, so we're going to be reversing its truth value. Um, the AND function will come up as true this time. And it does, because we're there. So the order of precedence um, stops, starts at the top. Um, these are the um, 
the basic um, algebraic orders of precedence, um, first you exponent, then multiplication, division, then addition, subtraction. Then adding on to our mathematical operations, we, we add the relational operations, um, equals, not equals, greater than, less than, and etc. Then we go into the logical not, then we go into the logical and, then we go into the logical or. Um, the order of precedence can be forced using parentheses, um, just like normal mathematics. Um, so going back to here, when we did here, um, our order of precedence is not first, then and. So before anything else happens, we have to not y on this particular line because that has a higher order of precedence than the and. So first we 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 reverse or we negate the truth value of y, and then we do the truth value of the and. Um, to give a slightly more complicated version of this, if we have 4 is greater than 3, and 5 is less than 10, um, we have a slightly more involved one here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we, we check, again, our order of operations. Um, so our relational operations come before our AND operations. So we have to do our um, comparison operations. So this um, obviously equates to true. This obviously equates to true. Then so we have now true and true, um, which with the AND will give us a, a true. Now we can also add mathematical operators to this. Um, because the mathematical operator has a higher precedence than anything else, um, the first thing that we'll be doing is coming over here with the multiplication, its highest precedence, so that's going to become 20. Then we'll come over here, 3 minus 1 becomes 2. So then we test our inequalities. That becomes true. That becomes true. Then we test our AND, and since both the left operand and the right operand are true, the result is true, as we can see here. <coughs> so up until now, we've been um, running our scripts in a very linear fashion. We start at the beginning, we run to the end, um, and we know everything that's going to happen beforehand before anything actually happens. However, most programs require decision making, and conditional statements are how we do this. So to make a decision, we use the if command. Um, so if some condition, using the um, logical operators and the Boolean statements that we've just been using, is true, we do some code. Then we've got a choice of just leaving it alone, or we can add additional um, conditional statements. Um, we can use elif and else. So elif is else if. So if something is true, do something. Else if something is true, do something. And then the final bit is else, which is um, just a if none, nothing above this is true, do this. So. If x print true. So that's going to go through, and it's going to look back up to x here, and it's going to find out that that's true. Then it's going to say, because that's true, I'm going to take this decision path and, and use this code. And again, we've got true down here at the bottom. Um, just as a reminder, um, when you come into in Python, when you come into code blocks, um, it, it um, controls these through using the tab character. So you tab in once per code block. Um, so if we wanted to then, let's say, elif not y, print. Not why. Now, of course, 
because x is always going to turn true here, it'll never get to the LF statement here. So if we say not x, x will be negated to become false here, and then it'll drop down into this um, conditional, and it will negate y's value, which will become true, and it will print not, not y. See, there we go, not y. Now, if we change this back to y, so now neither of these will happen, we'll see that the um, that the interpreter does nothing. So if we want a, a base condition, a, a base case, we use the else statement. So else would be we'll just say else happened. There we go. Else happened. Um, so since this is not true and this is not true, it defaults to the base else case and that's the results that you're going to get. Now, we can nest conditionals if we wish to. So if we want to say, if x print true, but then if we want to do an additional uh, conditional statement, we could say if not y, and then this will come through and it'll say x is true, so I'm going to choose this um, path, it'll print true, then it'll come to this additional um, conditional and it'll say not y, since not y is true, it'll print also not y. And there we go. So we can we can add additional elif cases here or else cases here if we wanted to. Um, so else um, and to get into that, we're gonna have to set this to false. So there we go. Didn't work. Perfect. Um, so that gives us um, our Boolean expressions of, of our truth values, true and false. It gives us our logical values of this and this, if this and this are true. So if x or y or x and not y are true, then we can do all of this. Um, we can drop a full conditional statement into here. And we'll still get the same result, as you can see there. OK, so coming back to our loops. Um, so loops can be used with lists. Um, we can um, do for, for something in a list. Sorry, I'm um, just filling out my list here. So I've got a list of uh, three names here. And so if I want to come through the list, I can say for name in a list. We can print the name. Get rid of all of this. Um, so as you can see, it comes through and does all of this. Um, but what we can also do is we can set a conditional underneath this. So if name equals scarlet, Okay, 
Yeah, so this time uh, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to take the list and we're going to step through it one, one space at a time. And um, then we're going to check to see whether or not that name equals Scarlet. Then we're going to do something else. So this will just print Scarlet for us. Yes, right there. Um, and so we can, we can uh, combine our for statements with our if statements. Um, we can also add ellipse and else's here if we wish to. Um, and the other way that we can do this is that we can just, sorry, I'm doing this backwards. Put the list here itself. And again, we get Scarlet. The other thing that we can do which we'll come back to at another point, is that we can um, step through our list using a um, an index compared to the integer, which requires just a slight change of the code. So if, if we want to force it to use indexes, um, we can then say, OK, so I've got some index for a range of 0 to just below the length of the list itself. I'm going to check the list at the index, see if it equals this. And then if that's true, I'm going to um, print the, the list at the index um, given. OK. So while um, a four is great because four um, allows us to do a certain number of things and then we know how many things are, are happening. Um, so while um, instead says, I don't know how long this loop has to run, and I have to wait until some condition um, happens for me to exit the loop. Um, so instead of that, what we can do is we're going to say, uh, all right, so using the while, um, we're going to set an index, so i equals 0. And we're going to say while a list of the index is not equal to scarlet, we're going to print the list at the index. And don't forget your quotes. Now this this um, has a, a problem in it because um, what's going to happen is it's going to um, print Scarlet until I tell the computer to stop. Let me show you that. Or that, excuse me. It's going to print that until I tell it to stop because what's happening is that this is never going to become false because the index is never going to change. However, if I say i equals i plus 1, then it's just going to come through and, uh, and say it once right here. Um, because as soon as we get to i equals 1, um, at index 1, Scarlet is going to become, um, or a list at index 1 is going to become Scarlet, and that becomes true. And at that point, the loop will cancel. OK, coming back to strings. Um, so we've been using strings, um, but now we've got um, some additional operators that we, we can do, like um, the concatenate operator, the com operator, and the um, repetition usage. usage. Um, so if we've got what we can do is we can now start adding these things together if we wish to. Um, so x plus y is going to show us hello world without a space because we're just concatenating it. There we go. If we want to add force a space in there, we add comma. There we go. 
Um, and the other thing that we can do is we can say, I want this to be repeated three times. And so, as we can see, the world has been repeated three times. Now, this set of operations still follows the mathematical operator um, order of precedence. So, first it's going to happen is the multiplication and the repeat. Then it will um, take that and concatenate it onto there, um, which we won't be able to see, but we'll still be able to see the output. And there it is. Um, so indexing operations on strings, we can go through and say um, what what character is at um, which position. Um, so remembering our offsets. Um, so at offset zero, we have the beginning of the string, and then it counts up until the end of the string. Now to go in reverse, um, we start at minus one, which gives us the last one, and then we can move through to back to the first one using negative numbers um, coming from the back of the string forward. Um, so here, if we want to say um, print x1, this is going to give us the character at the first position, which is going to be lowercase e. There we go. Um, and so you can go through and you can um, check individual characters at individual positions. But one thing that you have to know about Python is that strings are immutable. You can't you can't change a string like you could in C. Um, so in C, you could say something like x1 equals e uh, to change it to uh, an uppercase character there. But that won't work in Python. See, we've got an error. Uh, because strings are immutable, um, this means that we can't change how they are. If we want to change a string, we have to create a, a new string. Um, so here are some useful methods for string creation or string use usage. Um, upper um, allows us to change a string into a completely uppercase. So if we do x dot upper, it turns it into hello. If we do x dot lower, it'll do it all into lowercase. Um, capital, uh, capitalize, um, we'll give it into the original um, set, so we won't do that. Um, so strip is really good, because strip will remove any sort of white space from your string, including carriage returns, which will become important um, when we start working with files, because we need to manually get rid of carriage returns if we're dealing with that. Left strip will do it just to the left. Right strip will just do it to the right. Um, count um, works in the way of counting how many occurrences of something are in a string. So this should give us two. Yep. So there, there are two L's in hello. Um, and finally, replace. Um, replaces all occurrences of an old substring with the new. So instead of um, the way that we were doing it, which was x1 equals e, instead what we can do is we can say x dot replace e with e. And what this will do is it will automatically create a new string and um, associate it to your previous uh, variable um, name. Okay, why didn't that work? All right, there we go. Sorry, it returns a new string, which you then have to store somewhere. Um, so we've got a capital E there. All right, um, so that's a fairly short video this time. Um, as always, um, please read the two the chapters um, for Boolean conditionals, um, the revisited the loops, um, and the string chapter. Um, 
there's quite a bit in there. Please do the exercises with it. Um, Oxford students will get a email from me about what their assignment will be. Um, please like, share, and subscribe to the um, channel if you like what I'm doing. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.